is worthy to be praised. Let us put our hands together this night as we come into this house to praise God's name one more time. So now let us stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> the Lord, even unto death on the cross. We come in spirit and in truth. Amen. And now we will be led by the choir this evening. <laughs> Oh, 
this prayer. said a new command I give you to love one another as I have loved you so you must love one another oh God we thank you that we have an opportunity to worship you we thank you God that you love us even when we're not lovable but you continue to extend your grace and your mercy upon us oh God forgive us for we know not what we do. Oh God, we're here tonight on this Monday Thursday to acknowledge the humility that you had by washing the disciples' feet, by sharing in the Last Supper, and in sharing in the First Communion of the bread and the wine. Oh God, we say thank you to you because you knew what was going to come. You knew that you were getting ready to die. This was your last day before the crucifixion. And you didn't stop. You never gave up. And God, for that we say thank you. Because if it were not for you on our sides, oh, where God would we be? So we shout hallelujah tonight, God. Thanking you, God, just because of who you are. And God, in the midst of this service, we welcome the presence of your Holy Spirit to rest on our hearts and rest on our minds and our souls as we continue to worship you, God. For you are the center of everything that we do. And God, we, if, if we had a thousand tongues, we could never say thank you enough. So God, on this night, be with our preacher, oh God, that he will bring forth a word with power and with might. Be with our choir, oh God, that they will continue to minister to us through song. God, we say thank you again, over and over and over again, because you didn't have to do it. So God, we praise you. We magnify your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Pastor, I had one more you wanted to get to. <laughs> I just want to take a moment to share with you what Maundy Thursday is. So many people have asked the question leading up to this day. What is Maundy? And what is Maundy Thursday? It's not Monday, Thursday, Mondi. Mondi comes from the old French mandy, which comes from the Latin term mandatum. In English, it is mandate, a mandate or a command. Therefore, Mondi is a commandment, the specific commandment that Jesus spoke after washing the feet of his disciples during the Last Supper. Jesus said, a commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Maundy Thursday, also known as Holy Thursday, is a Christian holy day that commemorates the act of washing of feet and the Last Supper. The Last Supper, we know, is the final meal of Jesus Christ and his 12 disciples before his arrest and his crucifixion. It was the last time that they were able to gather around the table to share a meal of bread and wine, which became the start of the Eucharist, or what we call Holy Communion. Remembering how Jesus gave his body, symbolized as bread, and blood symbolized as wine. And during the Last Supper, Jesus washed the feet of his 12 disciples as they shared their final meal. The meaning of foot washing has layers. In ancient times, people walked, and I mean they walked far. By the time they arrived to their destination, their feet and sandals would be covered with sand. So the host would offer water for guests to wash their feet. 
So first, washing feet is a sign of hospitality, of welcoming, and of care. Washing feet is also an act of humility. Servants often wash the feet of others. Therefore, Jesus' washing of feet is an illustration of a humble mission of service. Washing feet also symbolizes the cleansing of sin from fellow Christians. So Jesus' new commandment was urging his disciples to show forgiveness to all. So remember Christ's mandate, church. It's commemorated on Maundy Thursday, the Thursday of Christ's final week before being crucified and resurrected that he said this commandment to his disciples. Jesus and his disciples had just shared what was known as the Last Supper. And he was washing their feet when he said, a commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Garland Davis Higgins. Amen, be at home. Be at home, Antioch. Amen. Amen, praise the Lord. On this Monday, Thursday. Amen. I'm glad you are here to take the walk all the way to the cross. Amen. I always say, if, you, if you're willing to take the walk to the cross, then you're better able to appreciate the resurrection. Amen. 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 To Reverend Adrian Johnson, to Brother Kavaris, Brother Dennis, Sister Brittany, y'all got the team in here. To, to this choir, look at you. Y'all practicing now, y'all gonna practice later. <laughs> we excuse you. Uh, to Sister Alfreda Brooks, our uh, president of the Six Episcopal District Lay Organization. You know, you have to tell folks stuff like that so they'll know you're somebody. Uh, is that Brother Chad, Brother Chad capturing the moment and his sidekick, Brother Wayne Wesley? Uh, to all our greeters and ushers, God bless you. Stewards, trustees, stewardess on duty. Amen, amen. To Reverend Doctor, I mean Sister, Dr. Angela Corbin. Amen. With the prophet sitting next to her, Brother Elias. Amen. Amen. You had a birthday sometime this week, didn't you? When did you have a birthday? Ma'am? Monday. Okay. We might have to give you something today. She, she showed up on Monday, Thursday, so, so somebody ought to have a 20 somewhere in the church. Hey, did anybody bring any money in the church today? And that goes my good buddy, Sister Felicia. Amen, praise the Lord. Ain't God good? Amen, amen. She has overcome so much and then gonna just show up. Look at God, look at God. Praise the Lord, amen. So good to see all of you here and uh, at this time we want to move towards our, our giving opportunity. Uh, many of you have uh, read your email and saw what came from the pastor's desk. That special appeal of giving above and beyond um, for this Lenten season of uh, $120, which would include that 40 for Ash Wednesday, 40 for Monday, Thursday, 40 for tomorrow. 
Amen. You, you, you might want to piecemeal it every night, or you just go on and just do it all at one time. And we certainly will be asking if you can and would to share another gift above and beyond a $50 for the resurrection. Amen. 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 And I just want you to tell your neighbor, he ain't trying to make nobody do anything. It's up to you what you can do and what you can give. So I just, I never, um, Sister Phillips, I never could understand how folk get mad about the preacher asking for money. You either have it or you don't, or you're going to give it or you won't. Amen. 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 I never fussed about money I was going to give or not give. If I was going to give it, I gave it. If I did, I wasn't going to give it. I wasn't going to be mad at anybody for asking for it. I just wasn't going to give it. Amen. Amen. Praise, Amen. The Praise the Lord. I'm trying, I'm trying to hope y'all out. <laughs> no, I'm going to hope you out. Y'all need hope. Y'all don't need no help. Y'all need hope. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all, have we done it? Uh, we, we y'all, why y'all, I'm talking and y'all standing. Come on, they ready to give. We're asking all of those who uh, shall give virtually. We appreciate that. The trays are coming around. For those who like to bring it, they'll come, they're bringing the tray to you tonight. And we certainly ask our online viewers who will share in this given opportunity. things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. for your sharing. It is now preaching time. And we have a preacher. Amen. And, and not only a preacher, but my nephew. Amen. His, his, his mama was a Simmons. Amen. Them my kinfolks from South Carolina. Amen. You didn't know that, did you, Sister Tucker? <laughs> this this brother, I have the utmost respect for him, and his seriousness of his calling and ministry. Uh, his faithfulness to our prayer line. And this, this brother, he don't care where he is, he, 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 gonna, he gonna do that prayer line. Amen, amen, amen. I don't, I don't know if it's because of his pastor that he's trying to get saved or what, but he, he's committed, he's committed to that. And, and, and I'm so appreciative and uh, if you're in this position of pastoring and leading people, 
you appreciate everything someone does for the glory of God. Amen. Amen, because my grandmama always told me people don't have to be nice. They don't have to do nothing for you. And when they do, Sister Lanise classmate, you show appreciation. You show appreciation. And I just want him to know in front of y'all, we do appreciate that and we do not take it for granted. You know, a lot of us take stuff for granted until we don't have it. Amen. Amen. And so we appreciate that. And on this very special occasion, as we go down this Holy Week walk, as we are at the Monday Thursday, before we go to the cross, I couldn't think of a better preacher to come and help us get there. And so here he is. You've heard him before, you know he can say it. That's not the issue. The issue is whether or not we shall pray with him as he prepare and ready himself to come forth and give us a word from the Lord. Will you pray? Yes. Will you pray? Yes. If you pray, I know he will preach. Amen. 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 So after the choir has blessed us again with another selection, the next voice you will hear will be the Reverend Clyde Corbin the second. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we pause and give the Lord a hand clap of praise?
Let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Amen. After this choir sings, I always just feel like doing a benediction and going home. <laughs> but there is a word from the Lord. Amen. To Uncle Vandy, the angel of this house. Right. Reverend clergy, those able proclaimer of God's unsearchable riches this awesome music ministry. Amen. My God. Mm. Oh, <laughs> to the established protocol, those I don't know who to call, the Lottie Dottie and everybody, to John Paul and you all. all right. If your name has not been called, feel free to call it right now. And your name would have been called. Those that are streaming, I just got a text from one of my best friends that he is watching. So, uh, Tori, my third favorite alpha. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> and of course, to my lovely wife, who thought it not robbery to be here, looking like you're looking. My son hates when I call him this, Bakita Hachi. <laughs> There's only a handful of people that know what that means. But God is good. Yes. And all the time. Yes. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it is once more that we have the opportunity to come to your place of fellowship, friendship, and worship. Lord, it is once more that we have an opportunity to come to the table. Yes, sir. And Lord, we come to a table that is already set. Amen. So right now, Lord, as we partake of what you have given us, we ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Yes. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And those that believe, say amen. Amen. Let me call your attention today to the 20th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. And while you have your finger on the 20th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, put another finger on the 13th chapter of John. The 20th chapter of Matthew and the 13th chapter of John. In the 20th chapter of Matthew, verses 20 and 21, it reads, then came to him, the mother of Zebedee, children and her sons, worshiping him and desiring a certain thing of him. And he said unto her, What wilt thou? She said to him, Grant that these my two sons may sit, the one on the right hand and the other on the left in thy kingdom. The book of Matthew in his 20th chapter shares the story of a woman and her sons. There's a parallel passage that follows on historically that is to be found in the 13th chapter of John. John verses one through nine of the 13th chapter reads in this manner. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took, out, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped the towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Yeah. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you will have no part of me. 
Then Lord Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Amen. The word of God to the people of God. Thanks be to God. I want to talk for the next few brief moments that we have to care and share from the theme from titles to towels. Right. From titles to towels. If there is any understanding of the method and the message of Jesus, it is that those who are called into his service are called into a kind of servant leadership. Those who give themselves in a commitment to the Christ of God are destined not to serve themselves, but to serve others in whom they come in contact. Jesus himself said that he had come not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. There is a strange and airy similarity between the passages of our reading. It is on one hand the story of a woman who in no doubt was well-meaning, a woman who decided that in her own way she would assure and ensure eternal life for her sons. And in a matter succinct manner, the Scripture says that this woman came and placed herself before Jesus. It appears that she really did not say anything when she first appeared to him, but rather Jesus looked at her and said, woman, what is it that you would have me to do? Sometimes, you know, when you come before Jesus, you really don't have anything to say at all. He can just sense the need that is already present within you. And the record says that he asked her, woman, what would you have me to do. Whereupon she said, Master, what I need for you to do is to ensure a position in the kingdom for my sons. I want them to have places of honor and authority and power in the kingdom of God. So if you please, sir, I, I wish you would arrange for them to have seats, one on your right and one on your left, when you come into your kingdom. But the record says that Jesus was about the business of demonstrating something different. She had come wanting authority and prestige and even a title for her sons. And yet Jesus says to her, I need to show you something else. It was not very long before Jesus met with his disciples in an old upper room there to have that last meal. When John records it, he records that Jesus, in the midst of his sharing with the disciples, John says that he rose from supper, laid aside his garments, and girded himself with a towel and washed the disciples' feet. Now then, my brothers and sisters, I shall not tarry long, but let me simply suggest to you that in the text here, there's deposited the notion that in order to use this towel, preparation had to be made. This was not a fly-by-night response. Evidently, Jesus came to the meal with a towel in his hand. Evidently, before he got to the meal, he was already ready for towel duty. Some of us, we make up our mind and we make our way over to the church house. It appears to me that we ought to have carried with us not our title, but our towel. I wish I could get a witness in here. When, when Jesus came to the encounter, he brought his towel with him. But, but then it says more than that. It, it says that he, what, what he did was he laid aside his garments. It, it says that he laid aside his garments and took a towel. Yes, sir. Even Jesus came with some baggage. You do understand that these were the folks that had messed with him. These were the same folks that had disappointed him. These were the same folks that were getting ready to diss him. These were the same folks that were getting ready to disown him. These were the same folks that were going to deny him. And Jesus came to the meeting with some baggage. But in the process, the record says he took off his garments and laid them aside. When you come to the meeting, when you come to a gathering of the disciples, I'm not talking 2,000 years ago, Pastor. I, I, I said when you come to the meeting 2,000 years after that meeting, when you come to the meeting, you need to be able to get rid of the baggage and take off the garment that restricts you and confine you. You don't need to come in here with last week's mess. You don't need to come in here with last year's garbage. You don't need to find your way to whatever it is that's binding you and come before him with your towel. Now then, there are certain things that the towel says. There's a testimony in the towel. Yes, sir. 
I, I wish I had time to talk about the testimony in the towel. But if there's a testimony in this towel, don't you understand that this is an unusual circumstance for Jesus? After all, he is the king of king, and here he comes with the towel. After all, he's the Lord of lords, and here he comes with the towel. Yes. These disciples expected him to be one who comes with military might and with power, but instead of military power, he comes with a towel. Oh, yeah. And I believe that there's a testimony in the towel. Yes, sir. And this is the first testimony that I find in the towel. And the first testimony of the towel is that everybody gets dirty. That, that's why we're in here right now is because everybody gets dirty. Everybody in here needs somebody that's taking the time to bring a towel that has an opportunity to clean you up on the inside because everybody gets dirty. Now, there's a second testimony in this towel. I'm, I'm talking about servant leadership. Yes, sir. That's really what I'm talking about. If you want to be disciples of Christ and you want to be a part of those who would serve others in his name, you must first of all remember that everybody gets dirty. Yes, there's nobody in here that's better than anybody else. There's nobody in here more saved than anybody else. There's nobody here more sanctified than anybody else. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All have faults and all have failures. All of us are dirty. Yes, sir. Then if you presume to take the towel, if you presume to take the towel, then do not wash somebody else's feet as though yours don't need washing. See, the thing is about those disciples was they had all been on the same road and, and that's our situation, that all of us have been on the same road. Yes. All of us have been subject to the same mountains, the same valleys, yes. the same rivers. All have sinned and fallen short. And so I, I just thought I need to tell you that there's a testimony in these towels. Yeah, yeah. First of all, that all of us get dirty. Yeah. Yeah. And secondly, if we wash others' feet, we ought not to wash them as though our feet do not need washing. But the third thing I want to tell you that as a Christian, the child of God only has two weapons. You have two weapons, amen? amen? And I know you know what they are. The first weapon you have is the weapon of the sword. Mm. The sword is the word of God. Can I get a witness in here? That, that's one of two weapons that you have, the sword. Anybody in here ever had to pull your sword out? Yeah. Someone acting fool on your job? in your house on 400, 285, 20? Anybody have ever had to pull your sword out? I, I tell you, this is a sword. When you get in trouble, this will be your sword. When you learn how to say, the Lord is my light and my salvation, it's your sword. When you can say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, it is your sword. But that's your first weapon. The second weapon is your towel. Because when you get through using the sword, there's got to be enough humility in you to get down on your knees, take the towel, and wash somebody's feet. And that's the only reason why we're in here today, because everybody in here needs a little foot washing. You, you need your feet washed because there's some dirt on the road that you've been on. And I need my feet to be washed because there's some dirt on the road that I've been on. I, I need to tell you one other thing, and it's so obvious that I hate to mention it. There are no titles on towels. If there's anything that church folk like, you don't believe it, you fail to call them by their title. We love us some titles up in here. We want to be known as somebody. But I thought I ought to tell you in here today that there are no titles on towels. Yes, when you get the towel in your hand, you've got to forget about your titles. Forget where you went to school. Forget who your mama is. Forget who your daddy is. Where, where you just get down on your knees and wash somebody's feet. But ah, my brothers and sisters, what a stronger church this would be if we came in here with towels instead of titles. 
what a stronger church it would be if the president of this and the vice president of that and the chairman of the other and the member of this board and the member of the other board. Never mind all of that. Can you wash somebody else's feet? Never mind all that. Can you help somebody as you pass along? Never mind all that. Can you give yourself to someone other than yourself? Never mind all that. Can you be a witness for God in the living of your life? But the strange thing about this text, Peter was the only one that objected. Old Peter, or as my daddy calls him, old hoof and mouth Peter. <laughs> Peter was always getting in trouble because he always said the wrong thing at the wrong time. And this was no exception. Peter says, Lord, you, you really going to wash Andrew's feet? Uh, do you know who you are? Lord, you, you, you just don't understand. Lord, I, I tell you what, you're not going to wash my feet. This is beneath you, and I'm not going to have it, so I'm not going to let you do that. And that's when Jesus said, listen, Peter, let, let me tell you, if, if I don't wash you, if I don't wash you, then you won't have any part of me. Mm, now, there's somebody that came in the church today resisting the wash. I'm talking about resisting the wash and ain't going to do nothing for me. I, not going to make me stand on my feet, not going to make me clap my hands, not going to let me give God the praise, that, not going to do anything like that. I'm going to sit here in this pew with my arms folded and I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to resist the wash. Well, it's all right for you to sit there like you don't need to be washed and it's all right for you to sit there and act like nothing ever happened in your life that needed to send you to the foot washing machine. But I, I, I thought I'd tell you that if there's anybody in here that knows that there's some dirt in your life from the road of your life that, 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 that you need some wash in you. There's somebody here that knows that you need a little washing in your life. So now listen, this is the last testimony of the towel because I know you got to go and it's still a school night for Elias. When the Lord wants to bless you, whatever you do, don't get in the way. Peter was just about to get in the way of his blessing. There's no way that God is ever going to bless you with a burden. There's somebody that came in here today and the Lord said, that he has a blessing for you, but you decided to get in the way and open your mouth and get in between him and the blessing that God has for you. Oh, but I tell you, Peter said, listen, Lord, if it's going to be like that, some, sometimes it be like that. Sometimes it just be like that. If it's going to be like that, then I'll tell you what to do. Don't just wash me. I need you to wash my head. I need you to wash my hands. I need you to wash my heart. I need you to wash my legs. I need you to wash all of me. Does there, is there anybody here that just needs a little washing from head to toe? You've had a rough week and you brought it in here with you, but you need to be clean as snow. Is there anybody in here that just needs to be washed? But just like I said, I got to go. And the pastor let me, I'll preach it another day. But, 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 but you, what you need to do is if you're going to get this washing, what you have to do, what is required is you have to surrender to the washing. Oh, yeah. Anybody here knows what it is to just surrender? I remember when I used to go home and my grandmother was still living, it was nothing for me to walk in the house and she would be by herself just singing, I surrender all. All to Jesus, I surrender, I surrender all. Anybody here knows what it is to just surrender? Sometimes when you come to the house and you just have to surrender, anybody here ever had to hold up holy hands and just say, I surrender? I've given up everything I have. There's somebody here that needs to be washed, but let me show you how to wash somebody. Well, everybody just stand to your feet. I want you to just hug somebody. 
hug them, hold them. Don't give them one of them little, how you doing, pat on the back, little hugs. Hug somebody like you want to be hugged, like you intended to hug them. Now whisper in their ear, God loves you, and he sent me to wash you with his love. God loves you, and he sent me to wash you with his love. Now come on and put holy hands together and praise him. Let him wash you. Give him anonymous hand praise and just be washed. Praise the Lord. Amen. What a word. to the doctor and they have to give you a shot and you worry about whether or not it's going to hurt. You know it's going to hurt. But some folks know how to give shots better than other folks. And they give you the shot and you all braced up and ready for it to really hurt. And before you know it, the real is over. That, was, that word came for. It was a good shot. And it didn't, it didn't hurt too much. Little, little conviction, little conviction. Anybody had a little conviction? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because we some dirty folk, ain't we? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Reverend Carver. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are so glad that God put you on our heart. You were the one to bring that word for us tonight. A word that we won't leave it in this room, but we can take it out of here and live it out. Anybody tonight not saved, not sure, but want to come and give your life to Christ. The doors of the church are open as they stay open for your consideration of giving your life, your heart to the Lord. Anybody want to be saved tonight? All of y'all look like you're saved. I think you are saved. This is a God opportunity to come forth. I think everybody belong to the church here. Amen. Anybody need to need a church home? I think everybody a part of the church home. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you again. Thank you for the preach word. Thank you for the preacher. Help us, oh God, to hear him as you had given it to him for us. Help us to go back and review it, oh God, and see where we stand. And help us, oh God, to become more like you and be more willing to carry our tower and not worry so much about our title. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us now prepare for Holy Communion. You already standing? We will now recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, our only Son, our Lord, who 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Church Universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbor and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession. And now let us recite the general confession together. Almighty, Almighty God, God. Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let us all now prepare and make sure we have everybody got a communion kit. Okay, good. If you don't have one, raise your hand and one of the ushers or someone to bring you one. Prayer of consecration. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of your tender mercy did give your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech you and grant that we receiving these, your creatures of bread and wine, according to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Take now the broken body of Christ. Take it and eat it. Thanks be to God. Take now the blood of Christ and drink it. Thanks be to God. Let us all pray now as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as 
it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. As we prepare to, uh, to leave, we're going to ask that you would remain in your pew until we can make it to the vestibule. Like for all of you to don't go out another door until you shake the uh, preacher's hand. Amen. 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 Can you, because you're not here on God us out of here early now, so don't be acting like you're in a hurry. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. And don't forget about tomorrow night, okay? Amen. And 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 bring 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 some of your people with you. Amen. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. just my feet, but my hands and my hands wash all of me from titles to towers. Now may the grace of God rest, rule, and abide with you now, henceforth, and forevermore. <laughs>